Cruise news time, and well, the, the world's largest cruise company dropped a, a bombshell announcement on Wednesday. Carnival Corporation said on Wednesday that in the era when their competitors are ordering new cruise ships, building new cruise ships, delivering new cruise ships, well, they choose not to. With hardly any Carnival cruise ships going to be ordered and delivered for the rest of the decade. Uh, that's that's certainly troubling. Uh, what's what's the hubbub, bub? What's the deal? The question that is begged is Carnival Corporation in trouble? Cruise news. Let's talk about it. Hey hey hey! What's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host Tony here with the latest cruise news and views for your face. For December the 24th, 2022, it is Christmas Eve. Uh, I hope your stockings are hung by the chimney with care. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a known fact that if you haphazardly hang a stocking by the chimney, that uh, all kinds of calamity could ensue. Uh, I think that uh, you know 8 out of 10 Christmas accidents are caused by haphazardly hung stockings. So do me a solid and hang your stockings by the chimney with care. And be hopeful that St. Nicholas will soon be there. Cruise news story number one, and this is really the big story of the day. A huge announcement coming out from the world's largest cruise company, Carnival Corporation, that they're basically going to stop ordering and building new cruise ships for the rest of the decade. Right now on their run book, there's, I believe, five or six cruise ships on order to be delivered over the next few years. And 2026 is going to be a significant year for Carnival Corporation as zero, 0, 0.0 cruise ships, brand new cruise ships, will come on the scene. Now, if you've been following cruising for any period of time, it's almost like a yearly ritual to celebrate the brand new cruise ships with each of the major cruise companies debuting their new darlings to the world. And sadly, that practice will still continue. It will just continue without any offerings from Carnival Corporation. Is that good or bad? And why why are they doing this? Well, the, the big reason that they're doing this is that they are overridden with debt. Carnival Corporation carrying a massive $34.55 billion billion dollars in debt. Take that number, 34.55 billion in comparison to the high before the shutdown, which was never any higher than 12 billion, which is an exceedingly a lot of money to be on borrow anyways, 12 billion dollars, but now 34.55 billion dollars. And that wouldn't be a big deal if the company was making 10 billion dollars a year, 15 billion. Th their best year prior to the shutdown, they made 2.9 billion dollars in profit. So if you extrapolate that out, if, if 3 billion in profit is your best year and you reinvested all of your profit to pay down your debt, it would take more than 12 years at that rate for Carnival to pay off its debt. And notice that is paying off debt with profit and Carnival Corporation has not been profitable on any quarter since the restart of cruising. They lost money again last quarter. Fortunately for them, it was less money than they said they would lose. So that was a positive sign. But they, again, for the 11th quarter in a row, missed their revenue projection. Publicly traded companies, it's such a weird dance. You have to tell investors how much money you think you'll make or lose. You have to tell them what you think your revenue will be. You have to tell investors a lot of things. And whether you're deemed to be a good or bad company is based on how many of those things or which ones of those things you actually tell the truth on or that you were accurate in your prediction. And well, unfortunately, Carnival has been fairly inaccurate in their predictions for much of the cruise restart. What happens if you're fairly inaccurate with your predictions for your revenue and your debt and your other numbers that are reported out to Wall Street? What happens? Well, your stock goes way, way down. We've seen that with Carnival this year, almost at an all-time low. It dipped back down into the $7 range just a couple days this week. And uh, yeah, it's, it's this dance where all of a sudden there becomes some concern whether or not the company will be viable. One of the obvious reasons that Carnival Corporation is not meeting their numbers is they have yet to return to the capacity numbers that they were doing prior to the shutdown in the reporting that came out for the last quarter. It was reported that Carnival cruise ships sell at about an 85% capacity. But when you compare those numbers from last quarter to the same time, 
time period from 2019, Carnival cruise ships were sailing at a capacity of over 100%. It's, it's a challenging situation for Carnival and their leadership to be in. But I think the path out of it may be somewhat straightforward. I'm going to tell you what the path is, what they're doing. But before I do that, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in carousing, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Thank you in advance. Look, it becomes a simple math problem with a few solutions that the leadership over at Carnival Corporation have to solve. And it does seem like they are taking some steps to solve these problems. The easiest, simplest way to pay down that debt is to make more money. And there are a couple ways to make more money. You can book more cruises. You can increase your revenue or you can decrease your operating cost. We've seen Carnival trying to do both of those things. They've talked about massive bookings that they got during Black Friday and Cyber Monday and the month of November. This is one of those ways that they increase their revenue. And then for anybody that's cruised on really any cruise line this year, you see where cruise lines are trying to cut cost. Limiting, say, the hours for the pizzeria, curtailing the amount of food consumption by adding a surcharge to people that get a third and fourth entree. All these things that most of us consider nickel and diming, if you look at the heart or the motivation of those changes, those changes are primarily cost reduction measures so that you can drive more money to the bottom line, to the profit, to service this debt. And in addition to increasing the revenue, decreasing the operating costs, another component is reducing your capital spend. Reducing the amount of physical things that you buy and hold as an asset on your balance sheet. And this is the lever that they're pulling when it comes to building less ships. Let's take the money that we were going to allocate to capital acquisition and pay down the debt. And of course, another way that Carnival is raising money is they're getting rid of some capital assets. We talked about it in the story the other day that they're going to be cutting loose of two of the cruise ships in the Costa brand and then also a third cruise ship that they have not disclosed where that is coming from yet. So Carnival will recoup some money on their capital assets by uh, selling off selling off cruise ships. And let me tell you, as a stockholder and a stakeholder in the company, I'm, I'm fine with those three levers because some other levers are not that advantageous for the investor. Issuing more stock just to raise money to service that debt, uh, that's, a, that's another thing that they could do. But the challenge is sometimes it dilutes the value of the existing stock. And that's not always good for the stockholder. Another thing they can do is reorganize that debt to a better interest rate. C Carnival continues to do that, which makes sense. And then another option, of course, is reorganizing that debt with bankruptcy, which is something we, we don't want to see as uh, stakeholders, as stockholders, investors in the companies. There's a lot of options out there. Again, I feel like the primary levers that the leadership is pulling there is trying to increase revenue. And we see it with this announcement on Wednesday, decreasing capital expenditures. It's it's definitely a different tack than say like Royal Caribbean is taking Royal they're completely banking on increasing their inventory through capital acquisition, through building more ships, building out more space for people to come on board Royal Caribbean. They're hoping that that spend yields way much more in revenue and uh, you know on ship spending, that kind of thing, so that they can service their debt. It's definitely two approaches to really the same problem. How do you service this massive debt? It may be a good position for the leader to take, right? Carnival already the world's largest cruise corporation, already slightly more inventory than other cruise companies. Maybe they take a downbeat. Maybe they take a break, let some of the other companies catch up when it comes to capacity and then continue to compete in that arena. And look, I'm by no means an expert in finance. That's just my layman's walking through what I see happening. What do you think? Is Carnival Corporation in trouble? Uh, the moves that the leadership is making, is it smart to get to a place of recovery? Or uh, do we smell bankruptcy around the corner? I don't know. Challenging times. Challenging times. Uh, leave a comment below. Thanks so much for checking out the show today. Uh, YouTube says you would enjoy this video next. Make sure you check that out. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.